Hello and welcome to another Central Virginia Sport Performance Podcast. This is Jay DeMeo and today I have the pleasure of talking with 2015 presenter and the University of Missouri's own Dr. Brian Mann. Uh, today, guys, it's a great talk. Dr. Mann and I get into what they're doing now with research at Mizzou and the things that they've now just uh, put out to be published, a study where they look at stress and how it relates to injuries. Absolutely awesome stuff, guys. Hope you enjoy it. Take a listen. Doc, what's uh, what do you got going on at Mizzou that's exciting you right now? Well, what's exciting me right now is something that we just submitted last week. Uh, basically, what we're looking at is uh, the effects of academic stress on injuries. You see, um, a couple years ago, we had this rash of injuries, and we couldn't figure out what was going on. So we did what any rational PhD is going to do. We start looking at every piece of data that we've got and see what we can find from it. Um, well, it was interesting. Now, what I expected to see and what I learned from this is the multifactorial uh, nature of injuries. There's so much that plays into it. Uh, we expect, you know, I expected to see something with the FMS at that 14 range, like you've seen for the military, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, wasn't that. Uh, we looked at the asymmetries. We looked at changes in strength. We looked at changes in body composition. We looked at everything that I could think of, and we didn't find, we didn't find anything. Uh, what, what did happen to find is after I was racking my brain and, like, pulling my hair out to try and figure out what the issue was, I happened to just have SPSS there on a you know Friday night, like 11 o'clock at night, and I thought after I got home from uh, dinner at McNally's, having you know eating some appetizers, having a couple of drinks with my friends, I decided I'm going to run a frequency analysis. And all that means is when, and I ran it for dates. So all that means is when did the injuries occur? And whenever I saw it, it was this perfect graph, right? So there was these huge bumps during test weeks. And then on no, uh, on weeks when there was low academic stress, the incidence of injury was very, very low. Uh, so we had, if you look at it and you look at it, we broke it down into three uh, different categories. So it was all broken down into camp, high academic stress, and low academic stress. So during camp, injuries are going to be high. I mean, you're doing two days, you're doing uh, lots of practice, lots of contact. You know, it's the old, uh, I know a lot of coaches out there apply to that, what is it called, the, uh, the cake baking theory of, uh, of practice where, you know, if you're going to bake a cake, you're going to break a few eggs, uh, which is not us uh, by any means, but I just know that that's the way a lot of people uh, approach things. Um, and we were had, as opposed to a low academic stress week, they were 2.89 times as likely to get hurt. Two to three times as likely to get hurt during camp as it were low academic stress week. So then low academic stress week, that's the one. And these are likelihoods ratios. They're odds. It's your odds are this, not that you get you are 200 percent time. You're you're absolutely going to go get injured. But it's just, you know, what happens? Well, um, with the whole team, you were about twice as likely to get hurt during a high academic stress week. And what I'm saying by high academic stress, talking midterms, that we week between midterms and the start of school, the week before Thanksgiving, and the week before finals. That's the times when I'm referring to high academic stress. Well, the uh, like I said, the whole team was about two times as likely. Now, what was interesting is whenever we took out the guys that, that started, you know, the 46 guys that were typically on the field starting or they were on a, a even relationship with somebody else they were playing all the time, they actually saw we had 2.8, remember, 2.8 uh, times as likely to get hurt during a uh, during camp as a low academic stress week for those guys. Now, for the test weeks, it was 3.25 times as likely to get hurt as a low academic stress week. They were more likely to get hurt when they had the academic stress from a test week than they were from camp. Now, there could be some confounding. Well, there's well, one. There is the just you look at the work by Petrie et al. And uh, well, the initial study was just by Petrie, but he did some other studies with with other people that were looking at the effects of life stress on injury. And they use like the Wisconsin uh, life stress questionnaire and they use some other upper respiratory questionnaire. 
and they were finding that, yes, you were too, you know, whenever times of uh, life stress, high levels of life stress occurred, yeah, you were more likely to get hurt. And, you know, there's other studies that were even examining med students and looking at illness. Uh, and there were studies also by Petri that were looking at social support. But uh, beyond, the, beyond the point, be it the scope of it is, is that we could actually uh, predict when people were going to get hurt because it's high academic stress. Uh, you know when a test week is going to come up. You know when midterms are. You know when the week before Thanksgiving is. We know have all these high academic stress periods that we can actually account for and know that, hey, these guys are way more likely to get hurt this week. Why don't we back off? So it, that's uh, that's something that's got me really fired up. It's, uh, you know, novel findings. Uh, it, it's very intuitive. Uh, you know, I've had plenty of times whenever I've done a program and in the off season, I thought I had the greatest written program in the world. We were getting stronger each week with uh, APRE and our velocity numbers were off the charts. And then test week comes and they tanked. Well, we happen to test right during midterm. So, you know, what do you expect? It's that additional stressor you now because the body can only, you know, there's only current adaptive reserves. There's not current adaptive reserves for strength training, for practice, for psychosocial, for relationship, for money, et cetera, et cetera. It's all coming from the same source. So uh, there's so many things that we can't control for and we can't account for without a lot more information. But we can simply know that it's test week. We might want to back off. We might not want to test our this week. That's really awesome. And I think that the part that I think that's even neater on top of that is when you like eliminate other factors and just say the guys who are playing as much as these guys um, – Kind of like putting it in a, this is going to sound awful, but kind of putting it in like a, the guys that are really important versus the guys who might not be as important. Right. I mean, they're all great kids. Yeah. They all are great kids who do great things for a great number of people. But for Saturday or for my guys Friday, there are some guys who are a little more important than others. In those two or three hours. Right, yeah. And you know, something that's actually interesting that I failed to, to mention just then uh, is some other research that came out on, uh, I can't remember the sport, but basically something that they had found was that if somebody is a new starter, right, they're the new super important person, they're three times as likely to get hurt as the established starter. So let's take that out uh, three to five times. I'm sorry. Three to five times as likely to get hurt, depending on the sport, as the person who is the embedded star. So now let's take that out a, a stitch, right? So if you've got a new starter who is coming in and starting for the first time during a high academic stress week, you're looking at nine to 15 times the injury risk that they would be going That's towards insane. the other person during a low academic stress week. That's I actually insane. predicted, uh, unfortunately, we had, uh, I say unfortunately, whatever. I have never been so excited to have somebody get hurt, and thank God it was not serious. But I had predicted well, one of my soccer players' injuries. Uh, there was a new starter during the uh, during midterms. They go, hey, coach, you know, I just want you to know if you do this, there's a, uh, this person is high, you know, they, here are the odds. Here's the risk. You know, here's what's going to happen. Well, it turns out that, you know, he was going to make the change. Then the other person happened to get hurt. The established person got hurt during practice during a high academic stress week. Three times is likely to get hurt. So then she has to go into the game. There is no choice. So she had to start that game. And within the first half of the first half, she was injured. And I was like, I'm right. I'm right. I'm sorry you're hurt, but I'm right. <laughs> You know, that's uh, you want to talk about sounding bad. Well, that, that really does sound bad. But, you know, it was just showing that here's the science just coming up and coming to fruition right in front of my eyes whenever it's applied to sport. You know, you want to talk about applied sports science. There it is right there. You're taking the findings that you've got. You're taking the research that's out there, making predictions. Man, it was I was so happy. I didn't say anything to her. And I didn't say to the coach, I told you so or anything. I just was, like, beaming that I was right. 
But at the same time, too, this is kind of like um, very similar to like just a, a readiness reading in general where the it's not saying little Johnny's going to blow his knee. It's right. saying, listen, we just might want to be careful now because we're not saying it's going to happen, but there's a higher risk of situations occurring in these situations than in others. Exactly. Yeah. It's not predicted catastrophic injury. It is just saying that you might tweak something yeah. or you can get hurt really bad. You know, there's, it's not saying that, you know, this is going to be a season ending injury if they go out. Uh, like the soccer player, for instance, it was a high ankle sprain. Uh, it was a high ankle sprain that shouldn't have happened because she was just loss of coordination. Uh, you know, Hindsight being 2020, she wouldn't have coordinated in any way. So that was probably bound to happen, but it happened at the time when I thought it would. Yeah, I mean, a swimmer's going to fall off the curb on a Monday. It doesn't matter if it's a, a high stress Monday or a low stress Monday. It's just right. a Monday. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah. no, that's, that's really awesome. And it, I think that what's neat about it is it allows us now to look at, again, with what's important tying everything together. Because, like you brought up, your evaluations obviously are not going to be at best at this time. But also, maybe you need to look at just your training in general right? during those times. Let alone, hey, maybe we need to talk about our you know, non-competitive season practices during those times. Especially. Because during the season is during the season. Yeah, you got to play. It doesn't matter. Right. But... If we have midterms in mid-April or early April, how important is that field hockey practice on a Wednesday? Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it could detriment the, the rest of their spring season. Yeah. They heard that day. Or if it's extreme enough. Right. I mean, it could be, I mean, you use the word catastrophic. Yeah. And, and that would be complete. That'd be a complete bump. Right. Yeah. I I like taking the lowest risks possible in certain areas. You know, I, I joke with. You know, I talk with the. Uh, I was talking with my uh, sports performance conditioning class today. We were going over technique, and we were going over, uh, you know, platform safety and, and stuff like that. And I was just harping on nothing being behind you. Like, you know, remember Million, million Dollar Baby, there's like, what, a point zero 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 one percent chance that by putting that stool in two seconds earlier, so that the person could sit immediately at the end of the uh, period, but they would hit their head on it and be paralyzed. But it happens. So we want to eliminate the risk. Mm -hmm. Possibly. If you know that you can account for that risk, you might as well eliminate it. Oh, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Now, Doc, what is this getting published in and when are we going to see it? Uh, well, it has just been resubmitted, so hopefully it'll be coming out soon. But it'll be uh, it was submitted to Journal of Strength Conditioning Research. So uh, when will it be coming out? Let's cross our fingers, knock on wood, that uh, the reviewer gods will look favorably upon it. But uh, man, I, I'm thinking it could be big, and hopefully it'll be soon if it gets accepted. You know, if at the very least. It's going to get people talking, and that's what it's all about, man. It's absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to read it. I'm really fired up about it. Doc, appreciate your time this afternoon, man. Look forward to getting you out here in a couple months, brother. It's going to be great. Yeah, Let's go. Yeah, man. Let's get it on. But, yeah, appreciate it, buddy, and we'll catch up soon. Thank you. Awesome. Again, a huge thank you to today's guest, 2015 presenter, and the University of Missouri's own Dr. Brian Mann. Awesome talk, awesome info, and very rarely do you get to hear directly from the researcher who's also someone who's spending a good amount of time in the trenches coaching athletes. Fantastic stuff. Can't thank Dr. Man enough for taking the time out to talk with us. Guys, as always, any comments, thoughts, questions, anything, leave it below. If you guys liked it and it helped you out, you found it interesting, whatever it may be, Please share it. We're just trying to get information out there to try to help coaches get better. So if you thought that this was worth the time, please share it. Also, if you liked what you heard from Dr. Mann today, 
Remember, you'll be able to see him live in person here at the 2015 seminar, July 16th and 17th here in Richmond, Virginia. Hope to see you guys there. Be on the lookout for more content. Have a great day.